Shalom, Shalom. It's Brother Yatazadai. Hero Israel. It's Galatians chapter 5 breakdown. Giving honor and glory to Yahweh by Shimei Awashai. Let's get right into it. It's the book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. And it reads. Stand therefore in the liberty wherewith Hamashiach hath made us free, and be not entangled again, Slakia, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Verse 2 Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Hamashiach shall profit you nothing. Verse Verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So verses 1 through 3, starting at verse 1, you have Paul telling these Galatians not to be entangled again into the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage, that is uh, signifying the, the bondage that mainly in the times of the uh, Greeks and the Romans, you had these um, the the elders of the Jews, the those in the high positions, the rulers of the people. They had this uh, this um, hypocrisy that they were promoting, and were adding uh, additional burdens to these practicing Jews, the uh, multitude that were under the elders and the rulers of the. Uh, Jews dwelling dwelling at that time under the uh, subjection of the Romans. So if you look at the uh, previous video, I had also uh, mentioned how these uh, rulers of the Jews were uh, with their traditions, like washing of the cups, certain stipulations that they had added. As far as uh, things that pertain to the law, like the uh, Corbin law, and so on and so forth, you know, they were, like Yahweh Shai has said, were adding grievous burdens to these uh, practicing Jews that were under the, um, the rulers, those that were in the high positions. So this is that yoke of bondage that Paul mentions in the previous chapter also let's go to chapter 4 verse 21 this book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 21 tell me ye that desire to be under law under the law do ye not hear the law so this is Paul going into the um, to the example of the uh, the the, the handmaiden, which was uh, the slave Hagar of Abraham, and the, uh, the wife of Abraham, which was Sarah, and comparing those to the, um, the way uh, as far as the law was introduced to the children of Israel after they had left Egypt. So that was that, um, the, the allegory that he was using. And the uh, the free woman representing the um, the times that uh, they were in here in the Greeks and the Romans, the times when the Israelite foreigners, these Gentiles, were called back into the fold. So that's the representation of the free woman. The bond the bond woman represents the uh, the yoke that uh, Yahweh Shai had mentioned and had rebuked to these. Uh, practicing Jews that's that uh, yoke that that they were um, promoting to the people so Paul uses that allegory and the uh, bond woman is the representation of how these uh, Jews were not only pr practicing that hypocrisy and promoting it to their people but they were um, 
in a sense, adding things to the law and completely going against the law that were contrary to what the practices of the law promoted. For example, you know, they despised their Gentile counterparts, which were Israelites, but they were straight away from their covenants and practices by being assimilated into this Greek and Roman society. So, again, you go into this allegory. This is what Paul is touching on also in chapter 5. So, he's uh, telling the Galatians here, don't be entangled again back into the uh, that, um, that yoke of bondage. Now you have returned to your former covenants and practices. And this is him saying this to these Gentiles. But also, you have to keep in mind, he's also writing to the Jews. So he's addressing two groups of people in one letter. And even the Jews, which had, uh, which were in these churches, he was also explaining to them, look, you're, you're, you have the truth being revealed to you. Because again, there was Jews that believed and they were well versed in the law and the examples given in the prophets. So when, when they had came into the knowledge of the truth with the revelation of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, and when he came on the scene, magnified the law, showed the proper execution of the law, commanded the lost sheep to return. So you had Jews that were uh, read parts of this letter. And Paul was also telling these practicing Jews, look, you have these revelations and and you see what Yahweh Shai Mashiach did in, in rebuking the uh, elders and the rulers of the Jews because they were adding to the law and going against the law, which were, which were things that they were teaching contrary to the law because they despise these, these uh, Israelite foreigners and, and, and were caught up in their traditions and they turned down judgment. They, they, um, they favored their positions more than practicing righteousness, which is the correct measures and executions of the law. So one of the examples being in the book of John, and I don't think I brought this point out in a previous video, but let me get that precept real quick. So Lucky, yeah, bear with me. Just uh, pull it up here real quick. It's Book of John, chapter eleven, and verse forty nine. And it reads. And one of them, named Caiaphas, Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Verse, actually, let's start at verse 47. Then gathered the chief priest and the Pharisees a council, and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Verse 48. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So you had the, um, the council, which was the, uh, the uh, chief priests and the uh, Pharisees, the rulers of the Jews, had gathered after they had seen and done the and seen the miracles that Yahweh Shai Mashiach and the things he was proclaiming, which was the truth, which was the correct measures of the law and, and calling the lost sheep of the uh, nation of Israel back into the fold. So, again, they saw that the uh, many, many and multitudes of the Jews believed. And they, they favored their position more than the um, truth being proclaimed. But Caiaphas, which was the uh, one of the high priests in that same year, told them 
it's expedient, you know, and he also prophesied that Yahweh Mashiach would be delivered for the uh, nation of Israel, not just those that were practicing Jews, but those that which were scattered abroad during this time, which were these Israelite foreigners, these Gentiles, which were which were also um, um, it had been had been um, the same project the uh, same lineage of the uh, patriarchs Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now let's go back to Galatians chapter five, and we'll move on. Salakia, we'll move on to verse two. <clears throat> Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Hamashiach shall profit you nothing. Verse 3, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So, here in verse 2, Paul is um, explaining to these uh, Galatians, these Jews and these Gentiles, look, if you're circumcised and and you go back to what these elders and these uh, rulers of the multitude of the Jews are doing and and keeping the law you know and practicing their um their uh, miracle salakia their um the ceremonial washings and also doing things like the Corbin law, claiming to keep the law, but being hypocrites, he's essentially saying that that will profit you nothing. Because, again, you had proselytizers which were practicing Jews that weren't under the uh, elders and the apostles of the, um, of the uh, 12 disciples, which were in Jerusalem. They were going about with their own doctrines and their um and their own doing it on their own as far as attempting to convert these these Israelite foreigners so they were immediately commanding them to circumcise themselves and to keep the law without teaching them the basis and the uh, foundations of how all these things had come to pass as far as Yahweh coming on the scene and from the practices of the law, which what was prophesied in Deuteronomy 18. So there was there was a prophet to be raised up among the children of Israel in its due time. And they were to listen to his commandments and his instructions. And the law was merely a predecessor for the things to, to come. And even in the prophets, it will tell you the same. The Most High sending the prophets to the children of Israel to continually re return, repent, and return to their former customs and covenants. So this is why the rulers of the Jews were hypocrites, because they outcasted these Gentiles, these Israelite foreigners. So this is uh, one of the themes in Galatians. Paul's telling these Jews and these Gentiles, look, if you're circumcised, and like like he said in verse three, you have to keep the whole law if you're circumcised. So that alone, it, it proves that Paul wasn't teaching these um, these Jews and these Gentiles not to keep circumcise themselves, but he's making a point because if you're not well versed as far as the, the epistles and also the um, things that Paul taught, you know, one may say that. That he was teaching contrary to the law but he was merely making examples when he mentioned things like circumcision on circumcision in certain verses so again verses 2 and 3 he's saying circumcision if you it profits you nothing if you if you're if you're not practicing the principles of the law which is to love your own people, also um, to practice uh, 
the judgment correctly in its correct measure in its correct time to have just weight and balances and our people nowadays do contrary to the things that are that are um, proclaimed as righteous in the law so this is why Paul is saying that these things will profit you nothing and you're you're indebted to do the whole law if you automatically think that if you circumcise yourself that 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 justifies you because the rulers of the Jews weren't justified in that because they claimed to keep the, the precepts of the law but, but were hypocrites and Yahweh Shai Mashiach reproved them for that he rebuked them for that same manner so now let's move on to verse 4 book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 4 Hamashiach is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. And, you know, this, you had the uh, rulers of the Jews, they had fallen from, from grace. Why? Because they had, uh, they had claimed to keep the precepts of the law, and also when they had uh, transgressed the law, the law commanded them to offer up a sacrifice, which was a form of grace. But in them outcasting their Gentile counterparts, that that was them falling from the grace that was given to them, and they denied and they denied that grace to these Israelite foreigners. So now let's go to the um, book of James, chapter two and verse twenty. And it reads, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So again, you know, these, uh, the rulers and the multitude of the, of the, um, elders and the rulers over the Jews, not the, not those that were, under the uh, elders and the apostles, the twelve disciples, who uh, who were directly taught by Yahweh Mashiach, but the rulers of the uh, those that were in the high positions given by the Romans. This is uh, James is essentially writing in this letter and proclaiming that you know essentially uh, that um. Faith without your your works is dead, and the example that um, you can apply to this is the uh, the Jews in 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 proclaiming their faith, their works were were dead works, and they and they actually had no works because they were they were automatically destroying the same things that they were building up now let's go let's move on to verse 21 was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar verse 22 seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was made perfect so again, the faith and the works have to align with themselves. So you can't pro proclaim to have certain faith, but you have no works. And works, the representation of keeping the law in its correct measure through your faith, because those things go hand in hand. This is why the law says you have to have just weight and just balance. Because if you claim to have uh, faith, but your practices are vain, your works, as far as keeping the law, then then you're you're essentially um, you're 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 vain, and this is what Paul is saying. This is an example that um, of the things that he learned under Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And this is the Lord, Lord's brother speaking. So 
So he said, faith, uh, your, your faith and, and your works and, you know, those things doesn't make your faith perfect. Because again, it has to be a just balance and a just weight. Verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Verse 24. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So again, the um, works and the faith have to coincide. And also uh, it's a it's a um, they have to align with themselves. So now let's move on to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 5. And again, this is why the uh, so many Jews had were had a dislike for Paul and Yahweh Shai because they were proclaiming the right teachings and the right measures of the law. And also they um they weren't, they weren't, you know, they weren't cutting nobody any slack, you know? So, actually, let me bring out another precept in Galatians. It's Lachia James, chapter 2 and verse 10. And it reads, For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. So again, these these um, rulers in these high positions under the multitude of the Jews had had claimed to keep the law, but they offended in the point of outcasting their other um, Israelites, which were by uh, their blood lineage, and outcasting them. Because they had uh, not practiced the uh, under the uh, teachings that they were claiming to be righteous, but were they were promoting hypocrisy. So now let's move on to verse seventeen. Even so, faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. So again, faith without that faith without works is dead, because you 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 proclaim to believe you know in God, which is what these Jews were doing, but they really you know believed in themselves, and 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 their works were dead works. Now let's uh, go to the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 5. And it reads, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Verse 6, For in Yahweh Mashiach neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So the um, Paul saying circumcision or uncircumcision is profitable, but faith, which which you work your faith through showing love, love is what keeping the commandments, and also keeping the commandments it is outlined. That you're not suffer sin upon your own people. And also do not hold a grudge against your people also. Which is what these uh, practicing Jews were doing. The uh, Mainly the the rulers of the uh, multitude of the Jews in, their high, pos in the, uh, high positions that were given to them by, by the Romans. So again... This and this is a common theme in Paul's epistles. 
Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 18. And it reads, Is any man called being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any man in uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Verse 19, Circumcision is nothing, and uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping the commandments of God. So again, Paul wasn't teaching contrary to the law what he was doing and mentioning these certain points was that the the um which was essentially a comparison that he was using which was the um the Jews which were claiming to keep the law and teach it but were hypocrites and and these Israelite foreigners returning back into the fold so he's explaining to them look if you're circumcised and then you have to keep the whole law but if you're not working the things that are taught in the law according to its measure then those things are unprofitable so he's uh he's essentially saying it's good to keep the commandments but built up in the correct way according to not just what is contained in the law but what Yahweh Shai HaMashiach taught which is the proper execution of the law so again this is why these uh, these Jews despised Paul and and they they essentially were trying to kill him because he was he was teaching the truth he wasn't holding back from from the things that that he was um, he was he was commanded the things the charge that he was given through Yahweh Shai Mashiach according to his ministration to these Jews and these Gentiles now let's go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. And it reads, For in Hamashiach, Yahweh neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Verse 7, Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? Verse 8 This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. So again, he was explaining to these. So he was explaining to these. To these Jews and these Gentiles, look, you know, the, this, these things come from from him that uh, that is trying to throw you throw you off and stray you from the uh, truth, which were mainly those that uh, weren't weren't under the uh, teachings and the doctrines of Yahweh Shai Mashiach and the the apostles and the elders taught under that were um that learned under him. So I can hear me. So again the point being in the in this epistle that there was uh proselytizers which were Jews, practicing Jews that had after Yahweh Shai and Mashiach came on the scene, they had um, they had been been essentially they had found out the truth, 
so they were immediately going to these Israelite foreigners as far as and by they found out the truth I mean they had uh, they had heard the charge that Yahweh Shai Mashiach gave as far as the lost sheep these Israelite foreigners and returning back into the fold so there was proselytizer Jews that were attempting to convert these Israelite foreigners but weren't directly taught under the the apostles and the elders the, tw the 12 apostles those who were taught directly under Yahweh Shai Mashiach these were men going about their own way and immediately forcing these uh, these Israelite foreigners you know to circumcise themselves and their children and keep the law immediately without properly building them up building them up it's like you're building them up so now let's go to the precept first Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6 and it reads your glorying is not good know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump so that that leaven was as far as what Paul was was teaching was those that were in in, in this context was those that that were um You know, we're, we're heretics, essentially. You know, practicing heresy. You know, leaving, leaving their, um, their former ways. And, and the ways that they were commanded to walk as far as the covenants and the law. And were given over to lust and, and, and being covetous and things of that sort. So that's that leaven that leavens the whole lump that um that Paul is mentioning here to these Galatians. So these other Jews that were that were approaching these Israelite foreigners and having them circumcise themselves, keep the law immediately, but but weren't using the um the correct doctrine, which is uh, the doctrine ultimately came from the Most High, and that's what Yahweh Shai said. The doctrine is not mine, but of Him that sent me. So again, they they weren't building up these Israelite foreigners in the correct way, because if they were to just circumcise themselves and keep the law, they would essentially be doing what these uh, these Jews were doing under the um, the elders and the rulers and those high positions given by. By the uh, Romans essentially just making themselves to look righteous but were actually their their fruits were fruits of hypocrisy so now let's go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 10 and it reads I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be verse 11 and I brethren if I yet preach circumcision why do I yet suffer persecution then is the offense of the cross ceased So this is uh, Paul addressing these uh, these other Jews who were taught under the um, the apostles and the elders, those twelve under Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and and he's saying in verse ten, you know, they're gonna bear their ju judgment in due time. Because again, when Yahweh Shai Mashiach came on the scene, he was telling these these practicing Jews, look, and even even in the beginning of John's ministry, he was telling these Pharisees, you know, 
pr produce fruits meet for repentance because why destruction was coming to the land Yahushai, he he was to he actually when he was rebuking the uh, the elders and those in the high positions under the people he he was telling them look you know there there no be sign given to you but the sign of Jonas the prophet and Jonas prophesied of destruction so this is what Paul is is reiterating here as far as the um, the judgment and those were those that did not obey the truth according to what Yahweh Shai Mashiach taught and the things that that the um, he taught the disciples and the apostles and those under Yahweh Shai Mashiach and again this is this is Paul is saying in verse 11 you know why does he still suffer persecution why because he constantly was rebuking these um these uh these Jews and the rulers in their high positions and rebuking them for their hypocrisy and teaching the right doctrine the right measures that these Jews and these Israelite foreigners in these churches were to follow and this is why these churches were despised it was they called it a it, at the end of Acts a sect spoken widely against why because they were obeying the truth and they were Jews that were were lovers of men and not of God so let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2 Book of Second Corinthians, chapter four and verse two, and it reads. Actually, let me start at verse one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we feign not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is to, hit, it is to them that are lost. So this is uh, Paul saying that you know the ministry and the instructions that that were given to him this is what he's telling these churches to not walk in craftiness and and deception which is what the um, rulers of the Jews were doing and and the gospel was hid to them why because they were so caught up in their traditions that they were blinded as far as the precepts not just in the law but in the prophets that had prophesied of the children of Israel going off and commanded to return to their former covenants and their former ways but again these these Jews they were they were um They, they 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 liked their positions their high positions you know more than proclaiming the truth and there's many instances where Paul is is uh, rebuking these Jews now let's go to the book of Romans chapter 3 and verse 3 Book of Romans, chapter 3, and verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar, 
as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So again, Paul, Paul is telling these Jews and these Gentiles, let God be true and every man liar. Because again, the precepts and the law and the commandments had prophesied of the children of Israel going off and eventually command, being commanded to return to their former to the former laws and customs and covenants. Verse 7 But if the truth of God have more abounded through my lie and to his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? So this is an example Paul is giving to these Jews and these Gentiles about the behavior of the Jews and the rulers in their high positions and the things that they were promoting. Because they claim to have the truth of God, but um, but through their lives that they were abounding as far as their traditions and overstepping judgment over the appearance of, of being righteous and keeping the law. And they're saying, look, why, you know, there's an example that Paul is taking on the, their, their thought process that they're taking on. This is why um, he said, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? So the, the Jews in the um, ruling positions, you know, they were claiming to teach the law, keep the law. And they were saying, well, I'm teaching the law and, and you know, I'm telling people to keep the law. Even though I'm practicing hypocrisy, why am I still judged as a sinner? Because I'm doing good works. But the point Paul is making is that you're doing good works, but your works are, are unfruitful. Verse 8, and not rather as we be slanderously reported. And as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. So this is why you also have to go into the Greek and into the various translations. Because this is Paul essentially throwing shots to these uh, Jews in these high positions. And this is why a lot of them despised the things that, that Paul was teaching and things that he that he wrought throughout his ministry. And I believe that accusation when he was uh, accused of teaching things against the law, which I'll cover in this video, you know, those were false accusations. Because, because Paul, he was... Uh, rebuking these uh, these Jews and that damnation was that destruction coming into the land verse 9 what then are we better than they no and no wise for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin so again Paul is making the point you know these these uh these practicing Jews, they were also going off as well as these Israelite foreigners who had assimilated into Greek Roman society. Now let's go back to Book of Galatians, chapter five and verse eleven. Book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 11 And I brethren If I yet preach circumcision Why do I yet suffer persecution Then Is the offense of the cross ceased So let's go into the account We're essentially saying Why is he um, Being persecuted when he's teaching the right things Well he's being persecuted One because the the Jews and the rulers in their high positions, they 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 enjoyed their their lofty positions and 
and their their favor given to them by the Romans more than building up the people in the correct manner. Now let's go into the account, book Acts chapter 21 and uh, verse 15. And it reads, And after those days, we took up our carriages and went up to Jerusalem. So this is uh, Paul after he had left um, Caesarea. And they were heading up to Jerusalem. Verse 16. And there was went with us also certain of the disciples of Caesarea. And brought with them one Menasson of Cyprus, an old disciple, with whom we should lodge. Verse 17. And when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James, and all the others were present. Verse 19. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Verse 20, And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Paul's telling the, um, Paul, he's going into explaining to him how all these Jews were, um, they were zealous of the law, meaning, you know, they were very protective. And um, if you go into the um, to the Hebrew, uh, which is uh, which means jealous one, which is how, you know, the name of Cain came to happen, you know, because he was jealous of Abel. And the uh, blessings that were given to him. So essentially, the um, Paul is telling Salakia, James is telling Paul, you know, all these uh, practicing Jews, they're, you know, they're really serious about keeping the law. Verse twenty-one, and they informed of, and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. So again, there were certain certain jealous men, you know, those who weren't built up in the proper manner. And, and it could have been even those that were approaching these Israelite foreigners and, you know, like, and immediately commanding them to keep the law and circumcise their children just so they can claim them as converts. You know, these were men that weren't built up in the correct manner. And James, James is essentially telling Paul, look, there's some of the uh, practicing Jews. They claim that those, those Jews in your congregation that you're teaching them not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the uh, the ways of uh, of the law. But that's not what Paul was was doing. This is this is why Peter said that that his letters are hard to be understood because they were misinterpreting the things that Paul was saying and teaching. And you can understand where the confusion came from, not just when you read Paul's epistles, but also the fact that he was teaching two different mindsets at the same time. So this is why he spoke in, in comparisons and in, 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 in allegories and similitudes. You can't take this is why you can't take the things that Paul said, you can't take everything literal. Now let's go to the um, 
that precept in Peter. But first, let's see if we can get Believers, chapter 6. It's book of Job, chapter 11, verse 6. And that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacted of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. So this is uh, essentially why Paul was um, accused of, of teaching contrary to the law of Moses. Because they were Jews in, in the... Um, congregation of the uh, churches wherein Paul taught and those were those that Paul spoke of in the beginning of Galatians though who had came in to spy out their liberty and these were men that that essentially kept the law and they um they believed in Yahweh Mashiach but they weren't built up in the correct manner they their eyes were blinded and this is why they they claim that Paul was teaching against the law, because not only if you read the letters, but also as far as the um the the fact that Paul was teaching two different types of um, mindsets, you could easily think that he was doing such a thing. So this is uh, let me get that that precept in the book of Peter. Salah here, bear with me. Book of Second Peter, chapter three, and verse sixteen. And it reads, And also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. So, so this is um, this is why he was saying these things, and why Paul he was uh, he was accused of teaching against the law. In the in the account of Acts twenty one and fifteen. And, and this is Paul, like he said in Galatians 5 and 11. He clearly said that, that, he, that he was um, preaching circumcision. So now let's go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 12. And it reads... I would they were even cut off, which trouble you. Verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. So again, if you go back to verse 1, 
that's the um the yoke of bondage that that Paul was telling these Jews and these Gentiles not to return to to unfruitful works to the dead works which were which were of those that claim to keep the law claim to be righteous but were doing the things contrary to the law this is why you have to have faith in works and not only do they have to coincide with one another they also have to align with themselves So now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12. And it reads, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of Yahweh, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto them, neither can they know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Verse 15, But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. So Paul is teaching um, to judge spiritual things for spiritual things, and and this is how you um, how you love one another, you know, because if you're if you're reproving your people and also showing love to your people, and you're using that incorrect measure, judging spiritual things for spiritual things. This is this is why the law is so important, and and not just the Ten Commandments, but the law as a whole, because the um, the rest of the law is just in in an expansion expansion of the Ten Commandments, and if you're walking in spirit, you're judging spiritual things with spiritual things, meaning you ha you have the um, the Ten Commandments and the other precepts in the, in the law, and you're you're spiritually letting these things lead you in, in in your heart, which is your mind, and that's going in the spirit, judging spiritual things with spiritual things. So it may it may not say, you know, in the law, you know, not to eat things like. Um, what do you call it? Molasses, but it says in the law, you know, things um, I have gave you new every herb bearing seed. And it may not say, for example, you know, honor your uncle and your aunt. But it says in the law, honor thy father and thy mother. So when you're judging spiritual things with spiritual things, you know that it's also talking about your your other closest of kin. So this is this is how you're judging spiritual things with spiritual things, and you have these things being processed in your mind. You have to constantly meditate on these things. And that's having in in equal weights and measures. And and you're executing the law according to the uh, spiritual aspects. Now let's go to the book of Galatians, or Salakia. Let me go to chapter 3 in 1 Corinthians also and bring out a precept in verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So again, you know, you have to, they say your body is your temple. You know, so if you're walking in spiritual things and then you're you're fulfilling the um the spiritual things that the law requires, not just for the uh, nourishing of your body, but also 
the the um the spiritual aspects as far as things that aren't that aren't in 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 the physical aspect as far as you know loving your neighbor as yourself and that goes into loving your own people now let's go back to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 14 and it reads for all the laws fulfilled in one word even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself verse 15 but if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consumed one of another verse 16 this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so that goes also into protecting your body as your temple because because not only are you doing that with the things that you consume as far as things that may be good or bad for your health but also that um walking in the spirit is not fulfilling the things that that are um that are not just bad for your for your body or for your health but things that that um that manifest that unjust and weight and balance as far as um, behavior wise and conduct conduct So um, let's go to verse. Um, actually, and bring out a precept. Book of Hebrews, chapter six, and verse one. And it reads, "Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Hamashiach." Let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. So the um, the repentance from dead works is what these uh, rulers of these Jews were, were promoting, which is outwardly looking righteous, but in your actions and your conduct, you're doing the complete opposite and you're transgressing the law. With things like the Corbin Law, things like excluding your people because they're not as built up as you are. So this is how you how you love one another. You're 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 giving your people a solid foundation. You're giving them things which are which are sometimes they may not like, but you're building them up. And you're judging spiritual things with spiritual things in this way. So now let's go back to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Now, let me get the um, book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 4. And it reads, Wherefore, my brethren, ye are also become dead to the law by the body of Hamashiach. That ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So this is, again, a common theme in the epistles. Being dead unto the law and bringing fruit unto the Most High. Because if you're, um, if you're showing love to your people and you're loving your neighbor as yourself, you know, not only are you showing it through the, your, your conduct, 
but also, you know, you're, you're, um, you're having equal, equal weights and, in and, and you're not swaying to and fro. And you're showing it all through example. You're showing it through your actions. And these things are manifested when you're judging spiritual things with spiritual things. This is why the law is perfect. Because you're constantly, you know, meditating on the law. So walking in the spirit, that's that's not just walking blindly. And also you have to you have to treat your temple as a as a um as if it is not your own, but you know it, ultimately it's God's temple you know because because all this is um, is just temporal you know and you have to treat it as such the creator made it you can't you can't it doesn't belong to you essentially so um let's see. So that's being dead to the law, you know, the dead works being the things that the law commands you not to do, which, which, you know, it tells you love your neighbor, don't um, hold a grudge against the children of your people and things like, and things like abstain from idolatry, do not eat blood. When you're doing these things, you're, um, you're dead to the to the works of the law that that are that are unfruitful and you're bringing fruit and you're bearing fruit you're bearing the increase by your conduct by your actions by judging spiritual things with spiritual things now let's go back to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 18 And it reads, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Because, again, if you're being led of the spirit, you know, you, you're meditating constantly on the law. So you're not you're not under the. Um, the letter of the law, as far as every single precept, you know, you have to you have to remember every single precept. What you have to remember are the foundational precepts and constantly meditate on those. And it's good. This is why it's good to constantly read, to constantly meditate, study, go into etymologies, pray fast. All through the power of spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Now let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. And it reads, Therefore, if any man be in Hamashiach, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So again, that's also what Paul is going into. You know, this is what he was telling these Jews and these Israelite foreigners. Look, once you're coming back into the fold and to these Jews explaining to them. Look, you can't go back to the the dead um, works that these uh, that these uh, rulers of the Jews are promoting you have to do it according to to the um, to truth and do that through through the perfection through the new man through judging spiritual things with spiritual things this is a uh, this is why uh, Aaron, you know, if you go, even if you go into the law, you had the Urim and the Thurim, which is the light and the perfection, which is um, doctrine and truth. So if those things go hand in hand, you're having that just weight and just measure. 
Lord willing, I do a video on that soon. But let's stick to the um to the subject of the matter, being. Let's see if I read. Actually, let's uh, go back to Galatians chapter five and verse nineteen, and it reads. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavishness. So, so again, you know, these things, if you're judging spiritual things, spiritual things, you're also constantly, you know, seeing where in the law tells you that these things are, are off. And the things that you should do, which the law also contains. You know, things like adultery, you know, fornication, and cleanliness. So again, we're not saying, you know, do not ceremonially wash yourself, meaning, you know, if you happen if you happen to um You know, things like, um, what do you call it? For, for the, for the, uh, for the females, if you're on your period, you know, of course, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay clean, you know, or when you have sexual intercourse, you have to, you have to wash, wait till sundown. There's nothing wrong with that. But the point is, you know, um, the works of the flesh, these are the things that, that Paul is saying. When you're being led of the Spirit, because all these things the law contains tells you what to do and what not to do. You know, things like adultery, it says, Thou shalt not covet. And if you're judging spiritual things, well, you know, Thou shalt not covet, that goes into several things. You know, not just, you know, um, looking at your neighbor's wife or and or lusting after because that's what it is lust is covetousness that's how you judge spiritual things spiritual things you know things like um like it says in verse 20 adultery witchcraft hatred variance emulations wrath strife seditions heresies you know, and, and, and like it says, um, well, let's move on to verse 21. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse, um, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So now let me bring out a precept in um, Book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 6. So like it. And it reads... Know the, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. So, um, so that's what you have to do with that old man. You know, in the body of sin, and the law is a representation of things that you should avoid from doing, which is hating your people. You know, holding a grudge against your people, and and those things go hand in hand with the with the fruits of the spirit, because the flute, the the um salakia, the um the works of the flesh. You know, or salakia, the lust, the lust of the flesh. You know, those are the things that the uh, that the law commands you to avoid. 
and the uh, fruit, the fruits of the spirit, you know, those are the things that are righteous in the eyes of the Most High, which is, you know, loving your people, being patient with your people, you know, faithful, you know, also, you know, long suffering. So now, um, and that's the representation of the uh, body of sin. So now let me see if I can Actually uh, let's move on I think I brought out the point pretty much This book of uh, Galatians chapter 5 Verse 22, and it reads, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. It's a good point Paul makes here. You know, there's no law against, you know, patience or being meek because it, that's, that's a... Um, That's a, um, you know, many people, you know, in this society, they frown upon a meek person. You know, they think that, that he's soft or anything, but that's part of also, you know, leaving that old man behind. You know, you have to understand that some people are just, you know, they're, they're, they're insecure. So, you know, they feel like they have to. Uh, project themselves as a certain in a certain manner, you know, and it all goes down to confidence Things of that sort, but this is why you have to have patience with your people, you know, and you show, you know The uh, your fruits your fruits through your conduct, you know, and again all these things come with age, you know so if you got the um Um what do you call it? The um, the the fruits of the spirit. You know, you just have to, you know, be long suffering. You know, with certain people. And there's nothing wrong with being with being a gentle individual, but again, all things are are according to its time and its measure. Now. Also, that also goes into being led of the Spirit. Verse 24. And they that are Hamashiachs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. So that's how you're dead to the law on these certain things. On the, um, on the lust of the flesh. You know, and the fruits of the Spirit are the things that are upright and are commendable in the eyes of the Most High. And these are all contained in the law. They may not be written or separate or individually cited. You may not see them all there, but if you're constantly meditating, walking in the Spirit, judging spiritual things with spiritual things, you have these things in, in, in your mind and you know how to desert, use spiritual discernment. Verse 26, let not us, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So again, you know, can't desire no vain glory. You know, you have to ultimately, you know, be that example for your people. And, you know, like it says in Romans, you know, they're your enemies for the gospel's sake, but the elect according to the um to the fact that all Israel will be justified in the end. But again some things, you know, you have to you have to um you have to be wise about, you know, how you walk and and 
and just let the let the spirit guide you. So um is uh Galatians chapter five breakdown. It's brother Yatazadak, hero of Israel. Again, giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bashimi Awashai. And say Shalom.